welcome back to another episode of Ability to Learn, a show about interesting facts and trivia for your daily knowledge. Once again, happy Thursday to you guys. Hope all of you are doing fine. Today we'll talk about skyscrapers, bowling, Welsh rarebit, which is a type of food, and for our stuff of the day, we'll be discussing the highest and tallest things in the world. So if you guys are ready, let's begin with our daily exercises. All right, time to do some upper body workout, people of discovery. Let's do some warm up first, okay? First is the basic head turn. While we're doing this, some friendly reminders though, perform these exercises on the pace you are comfortable with and ask for assistance if you need any. Then let's do some shoulder rotation. Let's start with the rotation backwards. Then move on to the forward rotation. Remember, the pace is up to you. So if you wanna challenge yourself, you can do it a little faster. Or on the other hand, Feel free to slow it down. Next will be the arms race. As you can see, I'm raising my hand on a shoulder level, then all the way up. You can raise your hand on either level actually, or you can do both, so it's up to you. Take a quick pause right there, and then let's do it again. Alright, next is the upper body twist. When doing this exercise, make sure you pause at the center before twisting to the other side. Okay, now that the warm-up is done, time to do some higher intensity exercises. We'll call this one the Archer Stretch. Assistance may be needed in order to perform this exercise. For the last count, try to hold this position for at least 3 seconds. Okay, now time to switch to the other arm. And 
hold it and done awesome next we'll be doing slow jabs with resistance like the last exercise, try to hold your last count for at least 3 seconds. Okay, now switch to your other hand. If you're unable to do this exercise on both hands, hey, it's definitely okay. Alright, next is arm curls. Again, just a quick reminder, perform these exercises on the pace that you are comfortable with. Also, if you need time to catch your breath, uh, take a pause, then relax for a bit before continuing. All right, we are almost there guys, so bear with me. You guys are doing great. Next is shoulder press. Let's start with the right hand. Hold your pose for the last count and hands down. Okay, time for the other hand. Now hold it and down. Oh, 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 oh. 
finally, let's do some inhale, exhale. Breathe in, then breathe out. Hey, congratulations! You did great today! Thanks for joining me for today's workout. If you need time to rest, you can pause this video, get some water, wipe your sweat before going on to the daily show. Other than that, I'll see you later. Okay, our first observance is National Skyscrapers Day. It's really fascinating how far we've come when it comes to engineering. Building structures has been part of the human history and culture ever since, from the ancient pyramids to ancient altars and temples all over the world. Additionally, for those who built these wonderful structures, they considered it as their greatest achievements. Today, we celebrate these awesome skyscrapers that we see around us, thanks to our modern engineers. Building one was never easy though, because there are a lot of things you have to consider and calculate to make it last through the time, while of course being safe for people to occupy. Like for example, one of the most important things engineers have to keep in mind when building skyscrapers is the foundation. This is the base of a structure and should be able to carry the overall weight of the building. No matter how fancy looking a structure is, if the foundation is weak, it will just collapse in no time. Okay, so how do we celebrate this observance? Well, you can look up some amazing buildings around the world on the internet using your computers or electronic devices. And then perhaps you may visit one in the future. Oh, speaking of which, um, have you been in a tall building before? If so, where was it? And what was the highest floor you've been? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Next up, US Bowling League Day. The birth of 10-pin bowling is considered to have taken place in 1895 in New York City, and bowling leagues started forming soon after. On U.S. Bowling League Day, we celebrate leagues and the fellowship and healthy competition that they provide to bowlers. In a bowling league, teams bowl against each other during a season. Each match usually has three games, and teams usually face each other once a week or once every other week. A team often consists of four players, but three to five player teams are also common. Scoring varies by league, but teams that win may be awarded points for each game won, and points for having more pins than other teams at the end of the week's game. Additionally, a player has an average that is based on how well they bowl, which can go up or down each week. There are often cash prizes or pulls to help incentivize bowlers, but even if there's no prize money involved, you can't deny the fun of joining your team and having a friendly competition with another team, then grabbing something to eat afterwards. And our last observance for today is National Welsh Rarebit Day. What is a rarebit, you ask? Well, Welsh rarebit is a traditional British dish. Oh, that was kind of tough. Often associated with Welsh cuisine. Welsh rarebit consists of savory sauce, of melted cheese and various other ingredients and served hot after being poured over slices of toasted bread. The name of the food is actually a Welsh term for rabbit. But hold on, don't worry because the dish does not contain any rabbits. In the 18th century, Welsh rarebit was served as a delicious supper. While fondue might come into mind, Welsh rarebit more commonly uses wheat bread and cheddar cheese. A typical European fondue would start with Swiss cheese. And as with any dish, there are variations of Welsh rarebit. Some of the recipes call for cayenne pepper, mustard, um, Worcestershire sauce, or paprika. Top the cheese with the poached egg, and the dish becomes a golden buck. 
add bacon, and some call the meal Yorkshire Buck. In any case, the creamy, cheesy, and toasty dish deserves a taste and a smile too. For today in history, in 1777, the American flag was flown in battle for the first time during a Revolutionary War skirmish at Cushes Bridge, Delaware. Patriot General William Maxwell ordered the Stars and Stripes banner raised as a detachment of his infantry and cavalry met an advance guard of British and Hessian troops. The rebels were defeated and forced to retreat to General George Washington's main force near Brandywine Creek in Pennsylvania. The national flag, which became known as the Stars and Stripes, was based on the Grand Union flag, a banner carried by the Continental Army in 1776 that also consisted of 13 red and white stripes. Then with the entrance of the new states into the U.S. after independence, new stripes and stars were added to represent those states. But in 1818, the Congress enacted a law to keep the 13 original stripes and instead only adding stars to represent new states. Also, in 1914, barely a month after the outbreak of World War I, Giacomo de la Chiesa became Pope Benedict XV, an aristocratic native of Giona, Italy, who had served as a cardinal since the previous May. Benedict succeeded Pius X. He was elected by the cardinals from countries on both sides of the battle lines because he professed strict neutrality in the conflict, meaning that they shouldn't be taking any sides. Pope Benedict became an insistent voice for peace from the beginning of his reign, um, though his calls were roundly ignored by the people in power. Then five years later, in 1919, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson went on a tour across the United States to promote American membership in the League of Nations, an international body that he hoped would help solve international conflicts and prevent another world war. The tour was intense for President Wilson. He traveled 8,000 miles in just 22 days, which cost President Wilson his health. During the tour, he suffered constant headaches, and in late September of that year, he collapsed from exhaustion in Pueblo, Colorado. He managed to return to Washington, but suffered a near-fatal stroke on October 2. He recovered and continued to advocate for peace, but the stroke and the Republican Warren Harding's election to the presidency in 1921 effectively ended his campaign. The League of Nations was eventually created, which is what we know now as the United Nations. For our notable figure born today, we have Ferdinand Porch in 1875. If you think his name sounds familiar, it's because he was the one who founded the luxury car brand Porsche in 1931. During World War II, the Porsche company designed military vehicles, notably the Tiger Tank. When the war ended in 1945, Porsche was imprisoned by the French for being heavily involved with Adolf Hitler. Then in 1950, the Porsche sports car that we now know was introduced. Later on, his son with the same name continued this auto company's operation. For our place of the week, which is Barbados, we'll talk about two awesome landmarks that can be found here. First, let's talk about Harrison's Cave. This cave is a natural wonder in Barbados, taking its name from Thomas Harrison, a prominent landowner in Barbados in the early 18th century. Harrison's Cave was only fully explored in the 1970s. With difficult to access natural openings, the government of Barbados in 1974 began developing the cave as an attraction by building shafts and tracks for trams to access it. This cave is 1.4 miles long at least. It's also an active cave with running water and shows the continued commitment Barbados has done to preserving natural wonders. But if you're not into caves, maybe this next one you can visit. It's called Arlington House Museum. This is a fully restored 18th century house. Its exhibits and tours include education on Barbados' first settlers, the influence of colonization and sugarcane plantations, the Arlington House Museum also offers the opportunity to see what life in the past of Barbados was like for many and to see the architectural designs prevalent on the island. 
Okay, so if you decide to visit this country, you might want to stop by these landmarks, both natural or man-made. We're gonna go way up high for our stuff of the day. Let's start with the animal of the day, the bar-headed goose. Found mainly in Central Asia, this goose is considered to be the highest flying bird in the world. It can fly up to over Himalaya for about 8 hours. This goose is gray and white with two horseshoe-shaped brownish-black bars on the back of its white head. The body is gray overall and the bill and legs are pink, orange, or yellow. The bar-headed goose prefers living in high-altitude mountain lakes. Its power and constant flight helps generate body heat, which retained by their down feathers. Such heat helps keep eyes from building up on their wings when flying over mountains. Additionally, it also has a special type of hemoglobin that absorbs oxygen quicker than other birds. They can also extract more oxygen from each breath than other birds can, making them fly longer. Then for our plan of the day, let's talk about redwoods. These trees, which are considered to be the tallest in the world, can be found here in California. Redwoods can easily grow up to 300 feet. Well, to give you a more visual comparison, this tree is about a third of the Eiffel Tower. Might not be as tall as you expect, but this tree is not man-made, it's natural. But if we really wanted to be specific, among those redwoods, a tree named Hyperion makes other redwood trees smaller. This specific redwood tree was discovered in 2006 and it is 380 feet tall. Then for our art of the day, we have the Salvatore Mundi by Leonardo da Vinci dated in year 1500s. Now this piece of art was part of our theme today because this painting has the highest value among all paintings as of 2019. It was sold at auction at Christie's in New York in November 2017 for a staggering 450 million US dollars, which became a new record price for an artwork. The 26-inch oil-on panel painting depicts a half-length figure of Christ as savior of the world, facing front and dressed in Renaissance-era robes. The Salvatore Mundi was once believed to have been destroyed. The painting disappeared from 1763 until the 1900s when it was bought by Sir Charles Robinson as a work by Bernardino Luini, a follower of Leonardo da Vinci. Then it appeared in England in 1958 where it is sold for about just $125 at that time. Then it disappeared again until it was bought at a small US auction house in 2005. It seems like whenever a piece of art goes missing, its value goes up. Moving on, our word of the day is summit. It is a noun, meaning the highest point of a hill or mountain. And for our fun fact of the day, did you know that the highest skydive record was performed by Felix Baumgartner on October 14 of 2012? Felix went up 128,000 feet high above southeastern New Mexico before performing his skydive. He then landed safely on the desert floor about 20 minutes later. Having a maximum speed of 833 miles per hour, Felix also became the first skydiver ever to break the sound barrier, which is just about 690 miles per hour. Well, of course, he was wearing protective gears and all, but you can't deny how scary it can get going down that fast. When he was interviewed after, he humbly shared his admiration for what happened by responding that sometimes you have to go really up high to see how small you really are. Hey, 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 it's time for our fun and games again, guys. Today, we will be doing praise for the phrase. All you have to do is guess the phrase before all letters are revealed. So, are you ready? Okay, the phrase is... Ta-da! Oh, I almost forgot. I'm supposed to give you clues. Okay, here's the first set of clues. There. What do you think? What? You need more? Okay. Well, how about this? Now what do you think? What do you mean it's not enough? Okay, so you're asking for another set of clues. Okay, 
um, here's gonna be the last one, okay? There. You think you can guess the phrase that we have for today? Tell you what, let me give you 10 more seconds. And time's up. Our phrase for today is action speaks louder than words. And that is the end of our show today, guys. Hope you like it and hope you learned something new. As usual, do not forget to share your thoughts about the topics we discussed in the comment section below. As always, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.